I am headed to DEF CON next week, actually. Yeah. Yep. Uh, is that a big thing for you? I've been going since I was, geez, 17 years old. So it's a tradition for me, and I'm really excited to go see all my Australian friends again. Nice. Um, so, yeah. Very cool. Well, I am joined right now by Christina Camilleri, who is a, an anti-hacker person. Is that the best way? What's your actual title? My actual title is Security Solutions Specialist, which is a mouthful, but um, you can think of me as an anti-hacker, yeah. Okay, cool. So what, uh, what is it, what does that actually mean? Because a lot of people uh, will have the cliche of like the matrix text going down a screen and you saying they're in the mainframe and typing rapidly on your keyboard. Yep. Uh, what, what is it that actually goes on and sort of working as a security specialist? My role at Riot is mostly focused on educating writers and how to be more secure at the company. So it's less about hacking behind a terminal, although some of our other teams do that. Um, but I'm focused on helping writers be more secure in their professional and personal life. Um, so lots of education. So are there actual people that want to like hack into Riot? Is this like a big threat for you guys? Definitely. We have um, nation state hackers try to target us sometimes. We have lots of cheaters that try to target our game to get a competitive advantage. And we actually have an anti-cheat team that focuses on that kind of thing. Um, um, it is a real threat. We do get hackers trying to steal our code and our personal data as well. So definitely a real threat we face. So how did you end up getting into all this stuff? Because uh, again, like uh, there's not like a hacker school or whatever. Like, how did you end up in this line of work? I started pretty early. I was home alone a lot with my computer, so I always liked figuring out how to take things apart. I started building my computers when I was really young, so I think my curiosity with computers started early. How I got into security, I went to my first security conference when I was 16 years old. I went to one called Rux. RuxCon, which was a local hacker conference in, in Sydney, Australia, where I'm from. Um, and I remember meeting someone who gave me a book on social engineering, which is a fancy term for maybe lying or manipulating people for information rather than going for the technical system. And from there, I got an interest. I started participating in some CTFs, uh, Capture the Flags, um, and my interest in the area grew. I started an internship when I was 17 years old and uh, stuck with it through my next jobs. Nice. And so, yeah, you mentioned you're from Australia. I was going to say you don't really have like a Los Angeles accent. <laughs> I'm losing my Australian accent, but yeah, I'm from Sydney. I moved to the US about three and a half years ago to San Francisco originally, then Chicago, then New York, then LA. Well, wow, so you've toured <laughs> basically the US, all the major cities. Yeah, it started in California and ended up back here. Yes. Yep. Um, all right, so you, you kind of got into all this stuff. It just sounds like you were really intrigued by the idea of like, um, hack, learning how hacking works and, and all that stuff. You mentioned social engineering, um, and I know that that's kind of a, it's like a bigger thing, right? Like a lot of people think that it's just about finding some sort of gap in the programming, but oftentimes it's literally about like tricking people into giving you their security information. Yeah, social engineering is a huge passion of mine. It's kind of what, driv what drove me to continue in, in this area. Um, like I said before, I think it's I think it's just a fancy term for acting or lying or manipulating people to hand over information that they have. Um, but it's a lot more of a broader field than a lot of people think. It, um, it's, it can be anything from physical social engineering, so breaking into an office and looking like you belong and stealing information from the company. And I have some interesting stories about that later if we want to talk about that. But, um, and there's phishing, so email phishing, phone call phishing. Um, just staying in character to steal information from people. Um, works really well coupled with technical attacks too, which is why I find it super fun. So Christina, you were interested in all this stuff, yeah. and uh, especially from a young age, and a lot of people who are interested in this stuff, they say, all right, I'm just going to go for it, right? Like, why are you not uh, breaking into, like, why did you not decide to go down that path, right? Is it just you, you felt like it was unethical and you wanted to, I mean, what, what led you to sort of being on the good side, right? I think that I have a lot of empathy and I like helping people. Um, the, the darker side of it definitely does interest me. Um, however, I'm a lot more, I get a lot more enjoyment of understanding how manipulation works and how to do all the offensive stuff and using that to help people not be a victim of it. Um, maybe this is a little personal, but I 
when I was younger and I was getting started in the industry, I was a victim of some like harassment and stalking and doxing, um, and that felt really, really bad. And so after being, after having to go through that and having an unpleasant experience, um, I wanted to make sure that I could equip other people with the knowledge and power to not have that happen to them as well. So I think that's how I, I leaned more towards the, the helping side rather than the offensive side, even though the offensive side is a lot more fun in some aspects sometimes. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, must be, it must be kind of compelling or interesting, right? Because uh, you, you get the chance to kind of like break things down and, and that's sort of how you got into it. What, what were some of your early gigs like before you came to Riot, working on this stuff? Super different to Riot. So before here, I was working for a company called Bishop Fox, which was a security consulting company. And with security consulting companies, you typically sent onto a client site or you work remotely for a client site and you're giving a, a task to do. So in my case, I did a lot of web application pen testing or penetration testing. Um, where to, to break that down, I was hired to break into a client's website or infrastructure, find all the vulnerabilities that I could possibly find, and then deliver a report to them. Um, so I was always on the offensive side in my previous jobs. And, and before that, I was working for a military contractor. So if you can imagine 17 year old Christina in a business suit being sent on site, um, I can't even imagine that now. Like but, onto uh, a military base. Not a military base. It was a military contractor, um, but will be sent on to um, client sites like banks or education departments. And um, I was doing forensics before I did web applications. So usually investigating someone's case, um, taking their laptops, taking memory dumps and trying to find out how a breach happened. Um, so yeah, consulting before I came to Riot and kind of shifted my role into education. Okay. So now you landed at Riot. Why shift from sort of those security firms to something like, which is very different in a video game company? It's an awesome question. Um, so the video game company side, I never even imagined that I could combine that I could combine two of my biggest passions together. I've been gaming since I was a little kid, um, and I've loved security and manipulation since I was really young too. So the idea of being like, you can work in security at a video game company was super, super exciting to me when the opportunity arose. But switching from consulting, um, while I really liked the offensive hacking side of the consulting world, um, I didn't really get an opportunity to help the client that we were working for after we delivered the report. So we kind of say, here are all the problems wrong with your baby. Uh, here's details about why there are problems with it. And goodbye, I'll see you later. Um, but at Riot, I can kind of do that side and find all of the problems with our infrastructure or um, areas where I can help rioters level up in their security and then help them do that. Um, so having that way more hands-on role with helping people and helping fix all the problems that other people find or I find is is the main reason why I wanted to shift in that direction. So you, but you've been playing games for for as long as you've been hacking, I guess. Um, a little earlier since I've been hacking, but yeah, I actually started with StarCraft Brood War. Okay, yeah, my, <laughs> me too as well. <laughs> when I was 12, oh, that was my first computer game. Um, and also how I started on um, IRC, which is internet relay chat. It makes yeah. me feel old, I'm not old though. Um, and I remember playing with my friends online and they'd always teach me, like make me watch the replays and then help me get better at StarCraft. So that's kind of how I started. So has it always, been, like start, Brood War is considered to be like one of the foundations of competitive gaming. Uh, League of Legends is also a competitive game. Have you always been interested in like that type of stuff, more competitive games? I'm very competitive, so yes. Um, I don't like losing. <laughs> no, I really like competitive games. I've sh kind of shifted away from more competitive games now to a lot more uh, roguelikes. So I like having the challenge of con constantly being shat on and then having to start again <laughs> and do better. Do you, uh, what, what champion do you play in League? I play Zaya okay. because she resonates with me. She's this aggressive little kitty bird character um, and that throws daggers at people, so I love her a bunch. Yeah. yeah, very good. 
Well, okay, so moving back to, to Riot, so can, maybe you can give me an example of like what, because if, if I sit down with an artist, mm -hmm. the artist can say, oh, well, I did the splash art or something like that. Can you give me an example of like what a, a typical day is like for you or a typical meeting where you're helping Riot employees figure out their stuff? Sure. On the Product Riot side, I will usually sit down with a focus team, for example, um, let me use legal as an example. And the first time I meet them, I try to put a more approachable and friendly face to security rather than like, hey, we're here to fuck your shit up and then tell you what you did wrong. Um, I kind of say, hi, I'm Christina. And can you tell me what keeps you up at night in terms of security? And I kind of go through uh, just a casual conversation with them about what they're most worried about in their team, what they're most worried about losing. So in legal's case, it would be information, like legal information about people. Yeah, contracts and yeah. stuff, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, walk them through what they're most worried about losing um, to hackers or to other rioters or to outside people. Um, and then get an idea of what infrastructure and products they run. And then we'll brain, had a little, sorry, a little brainstorm session together and we'll talk about how we can support them from a security perspective. Do they, do you ever give them uh, so much of like, I could imagine somebody walking out of a meeting with you being really scared, right? Because you come in and you're like, this is how everyone's out to get you. This is why they want to get you. And everybody's just like, oh my God, like paranoid almost of the online security. Because as much as they might know and be afraid of, you probably know even more for them to be afraid of, right? Yep. I try not to do that. It is a case, especially in consulting before I came here, that you'd use scare tactics a lot of the time. Um, but at Riot, I try to start the introduction with, hey, I'm here to help you. Um, I don't want this to happen to you. So I want to be here for you. And I want you to see me on campus anytime and be comfortable with asking me and approaching me and asking me about security questions or concerns you have. So I'm trying to be the more friendly, approachable face to security, which is hard in an uh, industry that's built around fear and deception. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I try to. What are any of the, are there any unique challenges here at Riot for you, especially given that in the past you worked sort of more on the consulting side, like is there anything kind of unique or, or a, a challenge that you have here? Yeah, the first thing that comes to mind is at Riot, I, I don't know if you know, but um, one, of our, one of the things that we believe in is defaulting to trust. Um, just always trust another rioter, trust their judgment, trust the decisions that they make. And balancing that with also the distrust of security has been an interesting thing to explore. Um, so I wouldn't say it's just here, but in, in a lot of companies I've worked for, the main question is why do I need to care about this? Um, and security can often be seen as a roadblock. It's something in their way that stops them from getting something that they need to get done done. Um, so that's been an interesting way of it's been a challenge, a good challenge for me to get people excited about security. Um, rather than seeing it as a roadblock or something they need to get over. The default to trust thing reminds me, there was a time, and I don't, I don't see it as much anymore, but um, maybe more of the Wild West, especially on the esports side, I'd follow all my friends on Twitter that worked at Riot, and you'd frequently see a situation where like somebody would tweet something from their account and it would be like, haha, I stink and my colleague is so cool or whatever, and it's like, then the, the next tweet would be like, oh, I left my computer unlocked, like, uh, now I got pranked or whatever. You don't see that stuff anymore, but I, I imagine that's kind of like the default to trust rioters and like the kind of weirdness around like, okay, am I leaving my computer open and unlocked and like people having access to it? It's just kind of a weird situation, I imagine. We, um, we take that seriously. So you cannot leave your computer unlocked, especially in the InfoSec team. And we troll our coworkers really, really hard. I've even seen scenarios where, sorry if this is going off topic no, a little fine. bit, Go for it. Um, where someone will stand up and turn around and look at someone that they're talking to, and then someone will come up behind them and like fuck with their computer while they're not looking. So we take, yeah, leaving computers unlocked really seriously. So it's funny that you say you take it seriously and then you're like, <laughs> and we prank each other nonstop as an example of that. Yeah, it's good to, it's, it's important to gamify and not take it too seriously. Um, if you're just going to post something on Twitter and make them look like, look, make them look bad, yeah. it's going to feel bad for them and it's not going to help them learn the lesson of not keeping their laptop unlocked. So we try to keep it fun. I mean, sometimes we'll shout like, I'm bringing donuts in for everyone tomorrow, and then they, they have to bring in donuts for everyone tomorrow. 
or changing their background to something embarrassing. Just, <laughs> or just something really subtle. So that they really learn subtle. the lesson, the way they learn the lesson. Yep. One thing that I've noticed is that there's a lot of people that do public speaking or riot, and especially in like the data situation, right? Mm -hmm. Like where there's so much a Right is literally doing innovation around data and networking and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, are there opportunities for that? Do you feel like uh, Riot is doing something particularly unique in, in their security field at all? I've moved away a little bit from speaking. I used to do a lot of public speaking around social engineering and web application pen testing. I actually get more enjoyment from hosting people on conferences now. So QCon, which is a software developer conference, which one of their sessions ran in London last year, I got a rioter, Emma McCall, to speak about her experiences and what she does at Riot over there. Um, and I'm also doing that again this year in San Francisco in November. Um, and we'll get writers as well because I think we work on lots of interesting stuff that's worth sharing with other people. Um, so yeah, moved away from speaking, but moving more towards getting people to speak about what they're passionate about. So that gives me more enjoyment. <laughs> what does success look like for you here? Like whenever you, what, when is the moment where you're like, I did it, like this, this thing worked my job, I've succeeded at it. That's a difficult question. Um, because I cover a few security areas at Riot. But the last thing that made me feel really, really good was getting a bunch of people to sign up to our password manager service. So seeing a reduction of people reusing their passwords, which is a really good win for me, or a more generalized version of that is seeing people be proactive about making their lives more secure, because that means less breaches or less chances of us getting breaches, less chances of them getting compromised as well. So anything that encourages and excites people about security is a win for me. All right, so there are a lot of people who want to potentially work in the games industry and, and potentially at Riot or someplace else. And for a lot of people, they, they might be interested in doing art or, or game design or something. Your job here is really unique. What would you say to people who kind of want to get into more of this side? Like they're more interested in like security or network operations. Like what, how should they go about doing that? What's the path for them? So if you have an area in security that you're passionate about, for me it was social engineering. Um, start getting out there in the industry and start talking about the passions and your interest in the area. And, um, and be able to explain those things you're excited about to people that are non-technical. And that was the biggest thing for me here, is being able to take the technical side and my experiences in consulting, but then being able to translate that for, for rioters. But also, um, if you're already in security, we have a bug bounty program, um, which is kind of us opening the doors to our infrastructure and our environment and say, hey, hack us. There are some rules, but here's the, here's the is the environment you can have and go crazy. And we've gotten, we've met some interesting people through our bug bounty program as well, because it's people passionate about one, helping hopefully making Riot more secure and not just hacking 100% for fun. Um, and it's, a, it's also a really good way for us to notice the people that are contributing to our bug bounty, bug bounty program. Um, so that's an interesting way in as well. So that's really interesting, so people, for those that don't know what a bug bounty program is, like you guys literally pay people money yes. to help find security bugs and stuff in the game. Yeah, so when you report a, report a vulnerability through our bug bounty program, we triage it so we make sure that it's a valid bug and its impact is, it has some kind of impact. Um, and then we will reward the people that report those bugs with, with money, yeah, um, and a different uh, depending on the severity of the vulnerability, that changes how much that we pay them out. Um, we have a really active bug bounty program, and actually some of my colleagues at my old job used to contribute to the bug bounty for Riot Games as well. Um, so that's really cool. I'm glad that um, we do that kind of thing here because we have such a large infrastructure and such a huge player base that it's really important that we show other people that we're taking security seriously. And I also love bug bounties because we have a really awesome, smart group of people, like security people at Riot, but having that difference, the differentiating, differentiating I can't say that word. It's fine, differentiating, yeah. <laughs> uh, set of people coming in and looking at our environment is I think the most valuable part of having that kind of program in place. That's cool. So that's, so people, if that's one way to stand out from the crowd, I guess, is to like be active on the bug bounty program. Yep and sort of learn how to be involved in that. And then, and then potentially that's a, a world where Riot might want to talk to you about coming on board. Yeah, I've even heard interesting stories of us noticing people contributing to comments on the League of Legends subreddit, 
So if you're if there's any security related questions or concerns there, um, having people chime in there is awesome. And uh, this is a bit of a unique case, but for for our anti cheat team. Um, a lot of them used to be cheat developers, and they've kind of gone from the, the bad guy to the good guy at Riot to helping stop people from cheating in the game. But that doesn't mean people should develop cheats to get hired at the company, That's I That's correct. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I wanted to ask you about was that earlier you mentioned uh, something involving how in social engineering could involve sort of physically entering a building and acting like you belong there. You mentioned that you have some sort of story from that, so maybe that'd be interesting to oh, talk about. Yeah, so this was from my old job, but um, at my old job, I had a lot of opportunities where I got to break into a client site, and the way that I did that, I mean, it changed all the time, but one of the ones that sticks on the forefront of my memory is um, I would go all out when I got this opportunity. So, uh, for example, once I had to dress up as a network, Engineer, I'm not a network engineer, but someone that was coming on site to do network maintenance. And um, I was pretending to be someone from a particular company. So I went and printed custom shirts that matched the person I was pretending to be. I um, found online what their badges looked like and I, I designed and replicated them one for one and put my name on it and took fake mug shots and put it on there, laminated the badge, put it in a sleeve. Um, and then I wore like a, a tool belt with a network cable rolled around. Um, and I came on site with uh, a fake booking. So I spoofed an email to, to say that expect these people coming on site at 11.30. They're doing some uh, network maintenance the name is Christina, and then arriving on site and being like, hey, I'm Christina, I'm here with the so-and-so network team here to do maintenance, and then just being able to walk into the office. So I don't do so much of that now, but that was one of the most fun things of doing physical penetration testing at my old job. Similarly at Riot, um, I haven't seen it, but I've heard stories of us hiring actors that will come in and they don't even replicate our badges or anything, but they will wear like a Riot t-shirt or a shirt with League of Legends IP on it. Um, and, and we'll hire them to see how far they can get on campus. Um, we've since leveled up our physical security. I don't know, physical, physical pen testing interests me because it's very human to just trust someone. And what I miss about Consulting is taking advantage of people's trust and so, testing the So stories. the lesson is never trust anyone. No, that's not the lesson. Because I mean, you said just take advantage <laughs> of, of people's trust, right? Trust people, but use your best judgment. Okay. Yep. And if the best judgment is wrong, then, well, then suddenly you've got a hacker into the building, <laughs> and uh, they're going to steal all your trade secrets. Yep. Yeah, we give, um, so I help run the DNOOB, which is like our onboarding process when a new rider comes on board. And we, we do touch on physical security and what to do if you see someone without a badge on campus. And it's not aggressive. We just teach people to say, if you see someone without a badge, just gently escort them to the nearest guard. Yeah, don't tackle them to the ground. <laughs> don't tackle them. That's correct. It's actually, that's actually what it says in the deck. It says don't tackle it them? It does. <laughs> Is there, would you be concerned people would do that? People are very serious. I don't think I guess it's about. a serious concern, okay. but I guess if it's in the deck, they might have happened before. <laughs> okay, yeah, you never. Well, it feels like whenever when you have to tell someone explicitly, "Don't do this," usually there's a reason why that somebody says it. that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Christina, for the chat today. Really interesting uh, to sit down and talk with you. And I think uh, the security side is one area of you know video game companies that people don't really think about. So it's really interesting stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Cool.